Welcome to the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show. My name is Agnes van Rijn, and I'm a life and business success mentor to female entrepreneurs and small business owners who want to be successful, whatever that means to them, but on their own terms. Today at the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show, it is my privilege to be interviewing Michelle Peters. Michelle, also known as the business instructor, is a former practicing solicitor from a magic circle firm. She now helps solicitors and other professionals to get more clients and decrease their profits without working more hours. She set up the business instructor because when she became a business owner, she discovered how little she'd learned whilst a solicitor about how to do critical business activities like marketing and selling and how to strategically plan for the growth of a business or practice. Michelle, I'm sure you will tell us more about it. Welcome to the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show. How are you? Thanks, Agnes. I'm really well, thanks. Really looking forward to our chat today and uh, to sharing some things with you and your listeners absolutely i'm absolutely delighted so for the listeners uh michelle is one of the members of my uh, athena uh, network central london so we know each other a little bit we do meet every month uh, and she's sharing our islington group um so that being said michelle tell us because i know more but they don't but tell us more about your reconversion, how it all started, how did you move from being a solicitor to being who you are today? Mm, great question, and it's interesting because it's a question I get asked a lot. How did you go from being a lawyer to doing what you do now, helping people grow their practice or their business? And I normally answer the question by saying it was a complete mistake. Not a mistake <laughs> as in I did, it was a wrong decision, but it was just because it was just the way things happened. It was not planned at the time. I just kind of ended up doing it. But, you know, recently I was telling somebody that story and I thought, well, actually, I don't know that it was chance. Or there is no such a thing as coincidences or chance. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, the longer I'm doing it, the more I think that actually it was just meant, meant to be. Mm -hmm. um, it was funny because I started my career as a lawyer, as you mentioned, and I most people who know me would say, oh, Michelle, back then she was such a lawyer, the lawyer type. Um, everyone expected me to be the lawyer and I wasn't entrepreneurial at all and I wasn't interested in business my dad was very entrepreneurial and I thought I was nothing like him and I just wanted to be a lawyer and do technical law work uh, and so I joined a big firm and I was very lucky I uh, had a good career but one day it just sort of happened that I, I looked up from my papers looked around in the office where I was working and thought no, I don't really think I want to be like these people anymore. And I particularly didn't want to be like the people that I was aspiring to be like, you know, the mm -hmm. people who were ahead of me yeah. on the career. So uh, I decided I needed to do something about it. And um, I remember I asked uh, to take a sabbatical and sabbaticals weren't allowed in my firm. So I was invited to leave and uh, maybe think about coming back. And I remember I had an exit interview with my HR manager who was completely dumbstruck that I would be leaving this great career to go to nothing in her mind. I had no plans. And uh, she, just, she said I was having a third life crisis, which I guess is something you have younger than a midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, because I was 34 at the time, mm -hmm. I think. And um, anyway, I left and I got involved in... Uh, business. I actually got involved in a business that my dad had set up um, and was starting to franchise the business and he needed some help with the legal work. So I thought, perfect, I'll do a month's work, sort out the legal issues and then decide what I want to do with my mm -hmm. life. Five years later. Wow. <laughs> That's a month. <laughs> it was a very long month. Uh, but what happened in the meantime was I started to get involved in business. I started to learn about marketing and sales and cash flows and planning and forecasting and all these things I knew nothing about and I, I was hooked. I really enjoyed it, found it fascinating. And because our business was franchised, we had people coming to us to buy their franchise and we had to teach them how to run the business. Mm -hmm. So I got involved in teaching the franchisees how to run the business. And I'd always loved the idea of teaching. And now suddenly I had something I was really interested in, something I loved to teach, and I really enjoyed it. 
So it was how I ended up in business. And after five years, we decided to sell that business because some of the other people involved didn't want to be involved any longer, some of my business partners. So we sold. And I thought, crikey, what am I going to do now? Now I have no job. I've quit my law. I've gone to this other role. Now I have no job. What now? Um, I thought about going back to law for about mm, 45 seconds. I was going to say 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> You did too much thought, longer. Yeah, I thought there has to be a different way forward. And then I just realized, why don't I teach the skills I've learned about business to other people like me who have learned, spent a lot of time learning their practice or their profession, you know, whether they're a lawyer or a doctor or a chiropractor or um, a decluttering person or a, a concierge, whatever they might do. Why don't I teach them? some of the business skills that I've learned so they can be not only good at that thing they've trained for, but they can be good at running a business doing that thing. And that was how the business instructor uh, was created. It wasn't called that to start with, but that was the business I yeah. created. That's uh, how it all started. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it seemed like a natural fit. In fact, that I was just really taking all my own experience and putting it together. The, the professional practice experience, then the learning about business experience and the teaching it to people. Yeah, putting it, it together. together. Yeah, that's why I'm doing what I do now. Excellent. And I find it a, a fascinating topic because, uh, well, as, as you mentioned yourself, uh, a lot of uh, business owners, whatever expertise they have, um, don't realize when they get started that there is much more to it than being good at uh, what you do. And uh, I, I love that you uh, had indicated so in your biography. Uh, I think I haven't been on my own About Me page uh, on my website for quite a while, but I even think that I have mentioned it there as well, that at some point I realized that uh, being good at what you do isn't enough. Um, so... I'd love you to further develop, given it is on top of it, your area of expertise, uh, what you see as being the biggest challenges that um, people have when they, when they start their, their business and that you may have been facing yourself as well. Mm, yes. I mean, many of the problems and challenges I've had are challenges that my, I see in my clients too, which is, mm. which is always nice. We can help someone with a challenge you really understand from first experience i think the biggest challenge that i that i see and the one i've had to learn myself is to realize that as we've already said being good at doing the thing is not the same as being good at doing the business of the thing mm -hmm. and and with that comes realizing that you can learn from other people who've already got good at whatever that thing is so if it's marketing or selling or keeping clients longer, whatever it is. There's so much expertise out there and so many opportunities to learn. And the real challenge comes if you, if you decide you think you're going to learn it by osmosis. So as I was saying on a training I was running this morning, nobody learned their key skills by osmosis. It didn't just come through the air. It <laughs> was through studying and practicing yeah. and learning from somebody. And it was the same for me, actually, when I started. Uh, one of my biggest challenges was learning how to do this thing called selling. Which that, that, that what? Oh, that ugly thing? <laughs> exactly, that icky, horrible word. And especially coming from my background, professionals don't sell. We don't sell. People come to us. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, especially when you don't have the big brand name behind you of some giant firm, you do have to be able to help people understand why they should buy from you. And, and that, in my book, is what the sales process is about. It's not about pushing anything onto people. It's about helping them buy. And I had to learn that. I had been taught it. When I retrained as a business development consultant, I got taught some sales. But the sales was, here's why I'm brilliant. Here's why you should do the work. And put your hand out and shake hands with someone. Do we have a deal? Yeah. I wouldn't do that in a That's, million years. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no. And so I had to learn a different way and and I did. I invested money in a training course, I invested money in coaching for myself to 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 develop uh the right mindset because I had a lot of blocks around yeah. I don't want to say that, I don't like this and it was really holding me back. 
And, and what will a... they think if if I say that? <laughs> How will they judge me? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so I had to learn very early on that even though I was now trained to be a business development consultant, and so in theory should be great at developing business, including for myself, I had to realize that actually there were gaps in what I knew and there were also challenges around my own mindset and what I was comfortable with. And I really had to work on those if I wanted to fix this process of being able to get clients. And so I did it. I did get training. I did get mentoring and it really worked. And, and I think that one of the biggest challenges sometimes is firstly identifying where is the gap where you need help? Mm -hmm. Where's the bit that's holding you back? And then it's about saying, okay, rather than tr doing trial and error and taking a tip from this friend and a tip from that book, um, where can I actually get the best help from somebody who's already done it and mm. knows how to do it? What I find interesting in what you mentioned as well is this notion to, just to rewind a bit, um, this notion of, um, of mindset, because it's one thing to understand a process and to apply it for others. But when it comes to selling yourself, it becomes completely different because you have those blocks. Um, and so identifying those blocks is, is, is really a key. So you worked on that uh, with, with mentors, I suppose? Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. And I still work on it. I mean, mm -hmm. I have, although I am a business coach and consultant and I help other people every day, I have two coaches of my own. I'm greedy. I don't stick <laughs> with one. Um, and I'm constantly working on mindset because I think mindset affects us every day and people often a bit reluctant to admit how much of our success is about mindset and how much we can do to work on our mindset mm -hmm. and to develop it. Um, one of my mentors says that um, success is 98.2% in a game, the mindset, and that mm -hmm. only the rest in strategies. And he's someone who sells a lot of training courses on strategies. But he, he actually, uh, once people start with the strategies, then he teaches them the mindset. Thing. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. It, it's interesting because at some point, one of the uh, positionings that I had taken for my own business um, was purely business coaching. Uh, no, sorry, I rewind. Uh, originally, um, I was there as a mindset coach. Um, and ended up realizing that it didn't work because people don't come from that angle. They don't know what they don't know. Yes. And so that's why I repositioned it now by saying life and business success mentor, uh, because they come to me from the angle of business. But exactly as you say, that's, uh, I, I had a call this morning with, uh, with one of my clients where we ended up talking about mindset. Um, and then they start seeing it then they start seeing that, in fact, they are the ones standing in the way of their own success. Mm. Yeah, and there's a great expression called um, hide the medicine in the meat. Oh, Which, I don't know that one. Yeah, so it's a great, it's particularly good if you have, um, you get taught it by the vet, by a vet, if you have an animal, you have to give it any kind of, yeah. you've got to put the medicine inside the meat, or in yeah. case of it's always cheese, because she loved cheese. So, <laughs> She never wanted the medicine, but she wanted the cheese, she would eat it. And then she would get the medicine sort of by the back door. And it's a little bit like it's that. It's a good expression, yeah. Yeah, and it's a bit like that with clients. Yeah. And I think this applies to everybody in business, whether they, it doesn't matter whether they're teaching about mindset or not, is no good selling the service that, people, that you know people want. Mm. It's got to sell them the service that they want. And then once they take that, you can hide the medicine in the meat, you can make them realize now they've bought this thing from you. You can say, well, actually now the real problem we need to deal with is this thing behind. And now they have your trust and now they have a relationship with you. Now you can really help them with what they need. That, so, is, that is a very good tip. That, that really is a very, very good point. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, don't forget, don't, don't sell them what you think they need, but sell them what they think they need yeah very good point 
Mm, and then help them get what they really need. Of, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So um, that's, that's being said about, about the mindset. What, what else do you see as the biggest challenges that uh, people are facing uh, in this process of, of understanding uh, that there is so much more to running a business than um, just being good at what you do? Mm, mm. If, you, if you want it to be more than a, an expensive hobby, obviously. Yes. Yeah. So mindset is critical. Learning the skills, committing to learning the skills. I think we already talked about that a little bit, but it's so important to devote, you know, really, uh, you could say you should devote as much, if not more time to learning the skills of running a business than you do to the skill of doing the thing you do. Um, because uh, one of the things I remember being taught when I learned about business development is Every business is a sales and marketing business, primarily. And then it delivers a service in a particular way, law, accountancy, health, property services. But you have to be a sales and marketing business to be in business. Because yeah. if you can't get clients, you don't have a business. You just have a hobby. You could be the best neurosurgeon in the world, but if you have no patients to operate on, you can't help anyone. Absolutely. And if that's true, then we should spend as much if not more time developing our skills around getting and keeping clients as we do spend all those hours on our training courses every year to keep up to date mm. with our technical topics or to do more coaching training or to do more uh, physical therapy training. So I really think that people need to change the balance of how they see where they should be spending their time. A lot of time I see people come to me, they say business isn't going well, but I'm booked on another course to do another qualification <laughs> next yeah. year. And it's the wrong place to be spending time with clients. In general, don't care about qualifications. They care about results. Absolutely. And you can communicate that when you're good at the whole getting clients part. So yeah. I think that would be my, my second big tip would be you've really got to commit to developing the skills of being a business owner. That's a very good one. And, and we, we use a lot of excuses uh, because in reality, we're afraid to go out there. Um, this morning, I, uh, not this morning, it was a, a few days ago, I had a client who was all of a sudden talking about redoing her website. And I said, you don't need another website at this day. You could even do without a website if, if you, it were taken very extreme. In reality, that's another other excuse. It's that uh, overprepared thing. So, like the additional training that will solve everything, and uh, no, it doesn't solve everything. Yeah, yeah, Excellent. absolutely, mm. absolutely. And I have a third, a third key thing. I think that is really important to focus on. Can I share that too? Yeah, no, of course, please. <laughs> and and the other thing that I see the challenge is that um, when people get into business, they start to I, if, if they've switched on to the idea they need to develop skills, then sometimes they go to the other extreme, which is I must learn everything about everything, do every course, every free training, read every book. And what happens then is they don't have a focus. So they get overwhelmed with too much. Yeah. And I've done this myself. I remember one, I think it was in my second year of business, I started to get into this idea that I needed to learn more. And I consumed everything that was going, every, lots of free trainings on the internet, books, video series, and some I paid for, some were free. And there was so much, all I was doing was learning, and I was never putting it into practice. I was just consuming information. Being and, there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that can also get in the way of growth because you, you have to implement. Yeah, implement, implement action, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, another great saying I like, to know and not to do is not to know. That's another very good one, yeah. Yeah, so important. And I think that one of the reasons people don't know where to focus is that they don't spend time looking inwards to their business and themselves to find out where is the block? Where is the challenge? What is stopping me? Because if I read a book of 25 tips for, let's say, attracting more client inquiries, that's fine. But those tips aren't specific to me and they don't take into account why am I not getting more inquiries? And so the first place to look is what's the block or what's the problem? Mm. What's the gap? What's missing? 
because when you know what's missing you know what kind what to focus on exactly you know where to focus and you know what kind of remedy to use mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you see what kind of wound you have you know what kind of bandage it needs um, but there's no point in putting a sticking plaster on a you know if half of your leg is falling off yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the wrong it's the wrong strategy so I think um, one of the biggest challenges I see and I had it myself as well so I really do understand this is looking only outwards for solutions not looking inwards and sometimes you need help to look inwards and see where the the challenge is but like when you go to the doctor they can diagnose for you because they're expert um, it's a bit like going to a um, someone like me who can diagnose the problem and say here's where you should focus and then you can put your energy in that yeah. part and then you get results it makes yeah. a difference. I'm, I must say that my life has completely changed the day that I accepted to look inside instead of outside absolutely that yeah. really is uh, essential foundational and yes. uh, yeah, and it makes all the difference in the world when you start doing that. Uh, things are really shifting. And as you say, it's not an easy thing to do on your own. Uh, we all need help to do that, and don't hesitate to get the help when uh, you know where to find it. Exactly, exactly. I do it all day for other people, but it's hard to do it for myself. That's yeah, it's impossible I'm almost. Yeah. So I have people to help me do it, so that I can then help more people to mm. do it. Themselves. Mm. It's, uh, you know, I definitely believe in that. There's everyone needs this kind of outside diagnosis and help uh, if they really want to succeed. And and you look at the very successful people in business; they all have people to help them. Coaches, oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm getting conscious of time. It goes so fast. <laughs> that before before we have to, uh, to 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 make an end to this interview, uh, tell us more about uh, where people can find you. Is there anything special that you want to mention? Yeah, thank you. So uh, for anybody who would like to find out more about me, my services, then the website is www.thebusinessinstructor.com. So that's thebusinessinstructor.com. And if you go there, you'll find a range of um, things that can help you with growing your business. There's uh, some guides and reports. There's also a webinar, uh, which is an online training I run every uh, week. There's a page you can register for that. But I was wondering if maybe I could do something a little bit more than that for your, for your listeners. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we've already talked about is this importance of finding out where the blocks are, where the problems are. And I do, um, I do something where in just 15 minutes on a phone call, which I don't charge for, I can help identify usually um, the biggest thing or things, there might be a couple, which are holding anyone back in their business from getting more clients or being more profitable. Okay. So if anybody listening to this thinks, well, I really would like more clients or I'd really like to make more profits from the business I'm already running, they can get in touch with me and ask me for this 15 minute session. I'll help them pinpoint the biggest problem and I'll give them what they should focus on to go with that. Because I think the more people who get that clarity, the more people are going to be able to um, grow their practice without this overwhelm and stress. So if anybody would like that, they can just simply send me an email which is michelle at thebusinessinstructor.com. Just mention the uh, Women That Make Things Happen show uh, and um, I will uh, happily provide them with that 15-minute diagnostic. Excellent. excellent, excellent. Thank you so much for that. I'm sure that uh, it will be very, very useful. Well, I know it's, uh, it is very useful. Um, so, so if we come back to your um, ideal clients, because of course your expertise leads you towards lawyers, but I understand that you're not working with lawyers only. So, so in essence, who are you working with? Mm, thank you for asking that so I can clarify. So my clients are all um, the owners of service-based businesses. Okay, so, so service-based to start with. Yeah, any kind of service. Um, but they, it tends to be advisory or um, uh, health or property related services. So, uh, for example, uh, surveyors and architects, you know, providing a service, um, health practitioners, chiropractors, physiotherapists, aromatherapists, all these kinds of 
people, and then there's coaches, consultants, lawyers, accountants, the more traditional advisory yeah. sort of services too. So, but if you're providing a service, then um, then I'll be able to help you. Excellent. So, um, if you were to close this, uh, if there was one last tip that you would want it to give the listeners, what would you say? Well, I think I'll have to share my favorite tip, which anyone who spends time around me, I'm afraid, hears quite a lot, <laughs> including my husband, um, uh, who hears it a lot at home. But my very favorite tip of all, and I, and I think the very, a great starting point for anything, is um, begin with the end in mind. Mm. And that is one of Dr. Stephen Covey's uh, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, which is a fantastic book about business, life, personal development. I highly recommend it. I got the audio book because it's seven hours long. and oh, It's easier yeah. to listen than read. But it's a fantastic book. But in his second habit, he says, begin with the end in mind. And I think it applies to everything we do. Whatever we want to do in our personal lives, or our business lives, think about what do you want the end result to be? Where do you want to end up? How do you want it to look? How do you want it to be? And then plan backwards. So many people just plan forwards the next step. Yeah, the next step only. Yeah, and they don't know if they're actually going to end up where they want to be. You need to know where you want to go. Hmm. Yeah, so begin with the end in mind with everything and then plan backwards and then you will see easily what the next step should be. Wonderful. Thank you so much for all those really very, very good tips. Um, I will see you at our next uh, Athena meeting in Islington. And uh, for the listeners, uh, so if you too are interested in either going after your dream or in reinventing your life like Michelle did, like I did, and like so many others uh, are doing, uh, you can get a free compl a complimentary consultation with me uh, by going to my uh, website, www.anyesvanrijn.com, and that is A-N-Y-E-S-V-A-N. R-H-I-J-N dot com. Thank you so much, Michelle. See you soon. Bye.